What is going on, everybody? It's the Frost, and we are back after a week away due to work, help, watching a house for some family. But I am back. I have watched everything. I have seen everything. But did you really think I was going to skip out on Monday Night Raw from last night? That awful, awful show. The first Raw in front of fans. And that's the best they could come up with. That was the best they could book for this show last night. Keith Lee returns, buried. Karen Cross makes his debut, buried. The NXT champion, who was undefeated for a year and a half, mostly because he was injured for about six months or nine months or whatever it was, but still, a guy undefeated. They just could not let this guy have a good debut. Now, before we get to Money in the Bank, I'm going to talk about Money in the Bank just a little bit. I'm not going to go from, like, overall what's going on, what happened, like, blow by blow or anything. But I got to talk about the Usos versus Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio. Why did this match happen on the pre-show, on the kickoff show? One, it was a really good match. Of course, the Usos are going to go down as one of the greatest tag teams in WWE history. But what kind of message does this send giving them the tag team titles. It shows one thing that we all know. If you're related to The Rock, you are safe. You are safe. They're not going to fire you. They're not going to suspend you. They want to make sure that they look good with The Rock. That is why Jamie Uso was not punished. That is why they were given the tag team titles. And if I am correct, the last time one of the Usos was in trouble... And got arrested. Like a couple of we they, a week or so later, they won the tag team title. So we really shouldn't be surprised about this. You know, a lot of us probably thought they ain't going to do that again, are they? But yes, they did. And the, and the Mysterios lose the tag team titles on the kickoff show, which honestly should have been on the main show. For all intents and purposes, the next match, the women's Money in the Bank ladder match, which Nikki A.S.H., Nikki Cross, Nikki Ash, Nikki whatever the fuck you want to call her, the superhero in training, which we can't call a superhero in training because that spells shit, um, won the Money in the Bank briefcase. And as you can see on my screen, she is now women's champion. We'll get into that with the Raw review. This match was awful. There have only been a select few Money in the Bank, women's Money in the Bank ladder matches. Of course, as we know last year, both men's and women's were done at the same time. At Titan Tower. So, honestly, you can't... Yeah, it's kind of hard to pick on that one for because of the way it was, the uniqueness and everything. But when it comes to a normal, traditional money in the bank, this match fucking sucked. Honestly, like there, I, I looked on social media after this and there were people out there saying, let's not ever do a women's money in the bank match ever Again, and I agree, this was terrible. But if you look at the, if you look at the, uh, look at who's all in this match, there wasn't like other than one, maybe two people. It just, it just didn't make any sense to have the money in the bank. Like it, like first off, can we get it down to six? Six women would have been better. You also made everybody but Alexa Bliss, who was put under a pile of. Um, a pile of stuff, of ladders, and Nikki, who won the thing, look fucking stupid. Every single one of them looked stupid. They just sat there, and especially Oscar, sitting there watching the briefcase and then letting Nikki just go up behind her and grab the briefcase. Now, when Nikki winning, if it was Nikki Cross, I'd be like, oh, this is great. Which, Nikki as a whole, it's fine. I am fine with her being able to give it an opportunity. It's fine, better than having an Oscar win or an Alexa Bliss win or Naomi win, Natalia, because they've been, they've been women's champions. Nikki has never been a women's champion, so giving her this was a great opportunity. But I do, before Monday Night Raw ended, I just had this feeling, and I'm glad I was wrong. I admit that I was wrong. I just had this feeling because through the entire, like on the pre-show, and during the match, they kept on pushing that every time a woman cashes in, she wins the title. Every time. Fun fact, outside of um, Oscar last year, everybody has cashed in on Charlotte. This is only the fourth Money in the Bank ladder match 
for the women. I don't count that one that... I don't count that first one that James Ellsworth won for Carmella, but the four that the women actually won, three out of the four were cashed in on Charlotte. So there's that. But Nikki winning, I'm, I'm happy for her. A lot of people wanted Liv Morgan to win. I'm really not surprised that it was Nikki because she has got this embarrassing gimmick. They're just going to give her the championship. So terrible, terrible ladder match, but let's move on. AJ Styles and Omos took on the Viking Raiders in what was a bad a match, which AJ and Omos are supposed to be heels. I think the crowd forgot the fact that they're supposed to be heels. But they cheered AJ the entire match. They were happy when Omos, which it's a babyface act. Big, tall dude, little dude, that's a babyface act. I don't know in any, any universe other than Vince McMahon's demented mind that that's a heel act. I just don't get it. So, yeah. They won Omos with the, like the spot of that match was when Omos took one of the Viking Raiders and lifted him above his head off the turnbuckle, and walked a few a few steps and threw him down. Just, that was good. But, Omos and AJ Styles get the win. They will be defending the titles next two, next Monday on Raw, so we'll get to that too. Now, this match I had to talk about too. MVP's Bobby Lashley, you know, Bobby Lashley took on Kofi Kingston. And for weeks, they built Kofi Kingston up as this guy who has a snowball of a chance to beat... Bobby Lashley. Well, surprisingly, they did the right thing. After the great promo that Bobby Lashley cut on the final Raw of the Blunder Dome, this guy went out there and he murdered. He murdered fucking Kofi Kingston. He beat this guy. This was the best squash match since John Cena versus Brock Lesnar from five years ago at SummerSlam 2014. I remember sitting in my in my um, living room that I was in at the time with my mouth open just how badly John Cena was getting beat. Now, this, of course, wasn't as an epic beatdown or as, as an epic um, squash because John Cena is, at a, if you want to go from 1 to 10 on star power, John Cena is a 10 and Kofi Kingston might be a 6 or 7. No disrespect to Kofi. I like Kofi. I like his gimmick. I like his character and everything. And he's just a hell of a dude, I'm sure. But they needed this for Bobby Lashley. Now, we all know where Bobby Lashley is going for SummerSlam. But with the winner of the Money in the Bank for the men, it just all ties together of who should be drop, who Bobby Lashley should be dropping that title to. Then we went to Charlotte Flair, Charlotte 9000 versus Rhea Ripley for the Women's Championship. We all knew it was coming. It just... It was a matter of time. This And this feud, honestly, the match was good. The match was probably the best match these two have ever had. And the match they had on last night was not any better. But the match, this is probably the best match these two have ever had. And Charlotte wins, Charlotte wins by putting her, by putting Ray Ripley's leg into the stairs, beating it down, kicking her a couple times, putting her in with the um, submission and making her tap out with the um, figure eight. And then the men's Money in the Bank ladder match, which was a million times better than the women's. Big E defeated Drew McIntyre, John Morrison, Kevin Owens, King Nakamura, Ricochet, Riddle, Matt Riddle, and Seth Rollins. Now, two things coming out of this is that Big E, it's about time they gave him something. Him winning in the Continental title was great. I, I mean, I'm glad he got to be another a, a two-time, I think it is, two-time in the Continental champion. But other than that, it just felt like they weren't doing anything with him. Now, with Bobby Lashley smoking and beating the hell out of Kofi Kingston, I see no other reason why you would not have the man to beat Bobby Lashley for the, for the WWE Championship be anybody other than Big E. Nobody else. There ain't another person on these rosters that it should be. You think Big E is going to go beat um, Roman Reigns? No. Not going to happen. Roman Reigns should not... I don't know who they're going to have beat Roman Reigns. We'll get to that in a bit. But I have no idea who they're going to beat Roman Reigns. But with the fact that the New Day has been destroyed by big, by Bobby Lashley and made, made to look embarrassed by Bobby Lashley, it all makes sense to have Big E come in probably after the match with um, who Bobby Lashley is going with, which we'll talk about. He might even cash in at SummerSlam because that makes the most sense to me. 
Roman Reigns versus Edge. This match was... It went 33 minutes. It was a good match. It would have been a great match if you cut 10 minutes off of this. Too many rest holds, which is typical for a WWE match. Just... If you cut 10 minutes off and do everything that you did, if you cut 10 minutes in between in the middle of the match, you did everything at the end, you have yourself a fantastic match. Of course, Seth Rollins screwed Edge out of winning the, the, the Universal Championship. After the match was over, Seth Rollins came back. They brawled for a bit and out of the arena. Roman takes the mic and says, everybody can acknowledge me now. Cena came out with his fucked up looking hairdo, probably for his peacemaker, whatever. But... Money in the Bank ended with John Cena celebrate, um, posing while Roman Reigns looked pissed as shit. And then we move to Monday Night Raw. Please tell me they have this all because I really want to play John Cena's John Cena's um, promo. They might have it all. Yeah, it was about the first five minutes. Let me see how this goes. Here's John Cena from last night. The confusion and the chaos and the electricity. There's a few of you chanting, welcome back. A few of you chanting, let's go Cena. A few of you chanting, Cena sucks. But you're all loud and we are all here. I am here tonight to explain myself after an unexpected John Cena meme-like return last night at Money in the Bank. Roman Reigns was angry, Paul Heyman was confused, Michael Cole was very excited, Pat McAfee still couldn't see me, and everybody had a lot of questions. Who, what, when, where, why? So let's get them all out there. Who brought me back to the WWE? That one's a layup. Look around. It was you guys. And it was Roman Reigns. So that brings me to the what. What am I here for? The WWE Universal Championship. When, about five weeks from now, a little event called SummerSlam. Where? Elysian Stadium, Las Vegas. That's a pretty safe place to bet. Why? Here's where it gets interesting. I could stand here excited and tell you about the pageantry of SummerSlam. About being a main event in a packed stadium. I could tell you about a history-making, record-breaking 17th championship win. It's not because of any of that. It's because Roman Reigns is an ass. And of course they're gonna pop up. And I believe he needs to be knocked down a peg. This pathetic Roman Reigns experience has gone on long enough. Roman Reigns is an arrogant, self-absorbed, overhyped, overprotected, overexposed gimmick who's not as over as he says he is. And that, that is coming from me. You know, there's a saying, if you're good, you'll tell everybody. If you're good, you will demand that they acknowledge you, if you're good. Now Dallas, you remember that team effort I was talking about when you was making all that noise? What'd that sound like? No, 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 come on, this is your chance to shine. What'd that sound like? I hear this section, I don't so much hear this section. What did that sound like? Hey, Roman, the rest of that saying is if you're great, they tell you. 
And I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be at SmackDown on Friday, and I can't wait to see you there. So now I got that off my chest, let's get down to business. Then Matt Riddle came out, they had a little bit of a bro off, which I really don't want to hear that again. And that was beating a Monday Night Raw, which, in my opinion, was a was the right move. If you're gonna have John Cena, in if you have the availability of John Cena to be there for the first Monday Night Raw in front of fans for the first time in like 71 weeks or 72 weeks, whatever it was, you gotta have him be the, one, the guy to kick the show off. Plain and simple. SmackDown will SmackDown will be really interesting this Friday, simply because it's going to be. Coming from two areas, it's going to be coming from Cleveland and the Rolling Loud, con um, whatever the heck that is. Ro Rolling Loud is what it's called. I have no fucking idea what that is. But that's going to be happening this Friday. That is going to be interesting. Of course, I will be back here, of course, on Wednesday for Texas Deathmatch 2 and Friday as well. Then, of course, Matt Riddle came out. He was here for a six-man tag match. You wouldn't know that because the, ta they, the commentators, if I missed it, didn't say anything, but we had a six-man tag match with Matt Riddle and the Viking Raiders versus John Morrison in the Tag Team Champions. John Morrison also, I had to mention, was the one of the most over guys at Money in the Bank. Like, I don't like the gimmick. I don't like the whole him being clowned around with um, The Miz. But he got some of the biggest pops of the show on Sunday. And... During this match, when he was in the ring, Johnny Drip Drip was chanting, like people were chanting Johnny Drip Drip when he was in the match, plain and simple. So, yeah. Now, John Morrison, definitely more over than I thought he would be. That's just, that's just what happens when you have real people there. So, you had yourself a decent six, it was a good six-man tag match. It was actually better than I thought it was going to be. Matt Riddle and the Viking Raiders win as the Viking experience goes to Morrison. This was this was very creative what happened because the Miz is out there in his wheelchair. Matt Riddle runs over, grabs a drip stick, take goes to Omos whose back is turned, sprays him with the drip stick, and then plants it on 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 the Miz. So the Miz is trying to get away. Omos is slowly coming to him so he can kill him for what he thinks is him being hit with the drip stick. So, AJ tries to get in between them. Everyone, he's trying to stop everything. So, Morrison ends up eating the Viking experience. And that is that. So, very creative way to end that match, in my opinion. Just, just one of those things that, hey, WWE did something very creative for once. But, the rest of the show just goes down from here. We have a Symphony of Destruction, which I couldn't spell Symphony for my, to save my life on social media last night. I'm so mad at myself. Jackson Riker versus Elias because we can't let this gimmick die. It's a symphony of destruction. There was actually a couple cello shots, which the fans, which the fans were all for, with Jackson Riker getting hit with the cello. Jackson Riker ends up winning after he puts them both through two tables, and that is that. I could really care less about this. I really could care less. The sooner the Jackson Riker and Alliance feud is over, the better. So Mansoor is backstage with Adam Pierce and Sonya Deville talking about Mustafa Ali teaming next week. Ali walks up and Deville reveals the plans for next week. Ali says he never said anything about teaming next week and knows nothing about it. He's not happy. Mansoor talks about Ali trying to teach him lessons as of late and says the better way than to stand next to him in a match. And Ali ends up agreeing to the match and says Mansoor better not screw this up. Sheamus comes in and he's complaining about Dumberto Carrillo getting a match with him after he successfully successfully defending his title in that sh that schmaz of a match last week. Which they said this is not a title match. It's going to be a champion, which they're calling them championship contender matches now. Like Tegan Knox and Shotzi Blackheart last week on SmackDown got one for the women's tag team title. So they won and they earned a shot. Tonight, we got two championship contenders matches as Bobby Lashley also later in the show did a um, open challenge with a surprise return. But Carrillo gets his match and he says he's going to leave Carrillo needing a Charlotte Steel mask as well as he smashes his face and he walks off. So, we get Starbot coming out to for the Champions co Coordination. We see how she won the title from Rhea Ripley at the, at the pay-per-view. 
Again, fans with the We Want Becky chants, of course, Charbonne, Sh- stupidly, and this is something you should not ever do, she acknowledged the fans' chant and said that Becky's sitting at home breastfeeding while I'm dominating the division. Well, Becky, the biggest troll, the, the big troll that she is, went on Twitter, changed her location to always in Charbonne, always in Charlotte's mind. And also said, breastfeeding at home, it's still the most over woman in the division, which is absolutely true. All I know is, when it comes to this, if Becky's able to come back, if she's cleared to come back and cleared to do whatever she can, and she wants to come back, they need to have her come back. Because this woman's division needs her. She's not going to save the division, but she's going to help the division. She says she can beat Rhea any time of the, any day of the week. Rhea comes out. Says, oh, well, if you think you could beat me any day of the week, then why not tonight? Showbot's like, well, you don't, you have a bad knee. How about no, 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 for your sake? So Neville and Adam Pierce come out and say, you just said you could defeat her any night of the week. So the rematch is tonight for the Raw Women's Championship. And that is your main event. So and and then she takes her she she takes her f- uh, her shoe, flings it at the at Ray Ripley, and then kicks her in the leg so she could you know have an advantage for later tonight. Which in most circles you probably think oh that's going to mean that she's going to be going to win but we'll see. Number one contenders match. Well, uh, okay, I'm sorry. We had not one, not two, but three championship contenders matches, which makes no sense on this. It says number one contenders match for the women's tag team titles, even though it's Tegan Knox and Shotzi Blackheart won a championship contenders match last week on Friday. So I don't know. Maybe each cha- each brand gets their own um, championship contenders matches. I don't know. But it's Natalia and Tamina versus the former tag team champions, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. What the fuck was with that hairdo by Nia Jax? Was she, what was she trying to make a fashion statement or something? She was fizz, her hair was fizzed out and everything. It looked really weird. Well, when it, when, just like any typical Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler match, Tamina and Natalia win thanks to Reginald getting in there. So, the champs head back. Baszler is fed up with Reginald. She said the word, she has words with Jackson. Reggie and says, it's his, it's not me, it's you, it's not you, it's him. It's always been him. Uh, Jack suddenly says, I'm sorry, man. Headbutts him and sends him to the mat with a headbutt. Talks some trash and uh, his fans boo. Baszler says she won Reggie. Baszler and Jack's head to the back. His fans chant, Reggie sucks. Now, the goon squad of the 24-7 championship, um, the 24-7 IW, um, I-90, the 24-7 I-95, 7-11 championship come in. Akira Tozawa runs in, gets chased by Lucha House Party and others. He stands, um, in the ring. Reggie comes from behind, ends up pinning him for the 1-2-3, and becomes the 24-7 I-97, IC, um, 7-11 Eurocontinental champion. There it is. And he runs away to escape. So yeah, Reggie is your that, that green belt champion. Number one, number one contendership match number two apparently. John, Sheamus versus Humberto Carrillo. This match went longer than it probably should have. Humberto gets really stupid. The reason I call him Humberto, the guy decides I'm going to slap Sheamus up the side of the face. You know where the steel mask is. So he does that. Hurts his hand like an idiot. And Sheamus hits him with the bro kick and wins like that. So, yeah. That was stupid. Then we get a Bobby Lashley Open Championship thing for the... And it's like, hmm. Hmm, what does this mean? Huh, what does this mean? Well, we're going to have ourselves somebody come in. They do, they, MVP talks about how last night, or uh, that, that Kofi Kingston got what he had coming to him. He got beats, he got destroyed, Bobby Lashley is the best, and that this is from now and forever going to be Bobby Lashley. Um, WWE, and he's never going to lose the WWE Championship. So, it's like, who's it going to be? And out comes Keith 
Lee. That's right. Keith Lee has returned. And he is now back. He is from the area. And a lot of people don't like the fact that Keith Lee lost last night. Now, yes, Keith Lee probably should not be losing his first match back since, you know, he's been gone since February. But I don't have much of a problem with it because he didn't get squashed. He wasn't like Kofi Kingston. He had a match with Robbie Lashley, and he had he actually fought this guy. Had a lot of a lot of offense. It's not like he went out there and got squashed. It's just that Keith Lee's not at. The, I know in if in other companies Keith Lee probably would have won that match last night, but you know the bigger picture is going to be Oldberg. But Bobby Lashley won. Old Bird comes out, they have a stare down, he laughs at him and says, Ha ha ha, I'm next! Bobby Lashley and him, uh, MVP has to keep him and um, Old Bird away from each other. Old Bird just sits there and laughs and everything, and that is that. <sighs> now, back from break and MVP is backstage, Bobby Lashley, Kevin Patrick approaches him and asks if they have any response. MVP says, Oldberg disrespected the, them and they are not even going to dignify that with a response. So it means we won't find out till next week. So, yeah. Then we had Jinder Mahal, Via, and Shanky. And Jinder Mahal shows us what's been happening between him and his former friend, Drew McIntyre, which led to, at Money in the Bank, G- Via and Shanky helping with Drew Mac- with um, Jinder Mahal taking and destroying Drew McIntyre and letting leaving him uh, dragging him away from last night's from last the night before his money in the bank. So yeah, I really don't care about this um, feud. I really don't. Then comes I uh, out of the two. The debut and the return. Out of the two that I think was done the worst, Karen Cross. Karen Cross comes out with no Scarlet. None of that. They killed they took that away from him. What is Scarlet going to do in NXT without Karen Cross? She's not a wrestler. She's never been a fucking wrestler. She's a fucking valet. That is her that is her sweet spot in professional wrestling is to be a valet to Karen Cross and anybody else they want to put her with. Her as a wrestler, no. So why the fuck would you not bring her up with Karrion Cross? But Karrion Cross is here. Jeff Hardy returns with no more words, which everybody's been demanding. During, I believe it was either Rebby or Jeff's wife who said they weren't bringing no more words back until the crowds were back, which they did. Everybody was happy. Karrion Cross got a couple moves in. Jeff Hardy goes for the Swanton, misses after a twist of fate. Karrion Cross goes for an elbow to the back of the head. Cross, um, Jeff gets out of that, rolls him up, puts his feet on the rope so the ref can't see it, and beats Karrion Cross in about two minutes. This guy was the is the NXT champion. This guy has been undefeated for two for a year and a half. Why the fuck would you bring him back? Bring him up to the main roster just to beat him? What does this do? For Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy didn't need to win this match. Jeff Hardy is fucking like Teflon. He doesn't need... He's bulletproof. He's fucking Teflon. He's not... You don't have to do, have him win, win this match. His legacy is up so high that you... He could lose in dignified ways, that is. But he could lose for the rest of his WWE career and nobody would think otherwise. Why did Jeff Hardy have to win last night? Why did Karrion Cross have to lose last night? What was the fucking point of bringing this guy up without his valet, without everything, and just have him lose in two minutes? After the match, Kendrick Patrick comes in and says, what did you think about losing your debut match? He's like, Jeff Hardy made the biggest mistake of his life because everyone will fall and pray. Again, why did this guy have to lose last night? That was the biggest mistake in the entire show last night. And then we had stuff with Alexa Bliss and Lily is back. I really don't care. So it looks like Eva Marie is feuding with Alexa Bliss. So Alexa Bliss goes from Shayna Baszler to Eva Marie. The good thing about it is this was all we saw from Eva Marie. We didn't see her in a match. We didn't see her attempt to be in a match. And, ugh, 
Just the sooner it's over, the better. And then the main event, Raw Women's Championship, Ray Ripley versus Charlotte 9000. This match was nowhere close to the as good as the Money in the Bank ladder match. Um, the Money, I'm sorry, Money in the Bank match. I can't believe I said ladder match, but Money in the Bank match. Ray does have um, Charlotte on the ropes. Charlotte gets out of the ring. Charlotte um, come takes the title, walks away with it. However, uh, Ray. Comes over to try and get her to come back in the ring. Rhea gets hit in the face with the title. Match is over. Winner by DQ. Rhea Ripley. But then they fight. They fight. They brawl. And Charbonne is taken out by Rhea. All of a sudden, Nikki Ash's music hits. She comes running down faster than I think you've ever seen her run. Gets there. Gives the briefcase to the... Cha to the um, Referee, I'm well. Ray Ripley didn't just go back to the back real fast. I thought they were going to have a tease of the cash in with Ray Ripley um, ruining it because she wants to be the one to um, take the title from Charlotte, not Nikki. But Nikki gets the cash in, does a really bad crossbody. One, two, three. We have a new women's champion, Nikki Ash. She celebrates with the fans. She get we get a brief replay. She takes the title to ringside to celebrate with fans, which is. The first time anyone's got to do that in way, way too long. And it goes off the air very quick because they were running out of time. I mean, outside of Nikki's surprise cash-in, I honestly am going to say it again. It just felt like with the way they were doing, the, they were pushing it. They were pushing that every time somebody on the women's side wins the money in the bank, they cash in because honestly, everyone has. It just... It just felt like they were going to have her fail. I'm glad to see that she won. I hope Nikki does do get something out of this. But again, I, I just don't like the Nikki Ash thing. Nikki Cross winning the Money in the Bank would have been great. Crazy Nikki being Money in the Bank champ, um, ladder match winner, and the Money in the Bank champion would have been um, and the Women's Champion would have been great. But it is what it is. Monday Night Raw went off the air. And it was probably one of the worst Monday Night Raws of all time. I've seen probably worse, but it's up there. That is your quick, quick Money in the Bank um, review, um, thoughts and review. In your Monday Night Raw review, hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. Find me on Minds at the Frowns Club. Find me on Twitch.tv slash the Frowns Club. And find me on Instagram at the Frowns Club. And I will see you guys tomorrow for Fighter Fest Night 2. And I will give... My thoughts on Fighter Fist Night 1 as well tomorrow. But until then, my name is The France, and I'll see you guys later.